Yeah. Okay, so we have from The Economist, uh, described by Vladimir Lenin over 100 years ago now, as the journal which speaks for British billionaires. What do we have from yeah. them, Kit? Yeah, well, it's like, I mean, I think that it's, it, 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 the, the, econ the Economist is really interesting to watch because yes, it's like, it is effectively concerned with telling wealthy liberals and rich people that you're brilliant and everything is fine and, and countries like Russia are really awful and evil and countries like China, like it's like every single year they predict like China's imminent collapse. It's yeah. like their growth is over, right. I like blah, blah, blah. And like, they and they're also like 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 nakedly Zionist as well, and yeah. it's like they published a really interesting article. It was kind of a post mortem on on the the genocide in Gaza that was like admitting that like well, inter, Israel is now an international pariah. They've not achieved any of their goals. Their military is screwed. Their economy is in a complete shambles, and they've made themselves look like a bunch of psychopaths. Yeah. Um. And it this is like really 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 bad. They're basically finished, and it's like for them to for the Economist to publish something like that. Like I mean, it's just a, it's, it's astonishing. It a astonishing. Yeah, it a but so this. This new this um, this article which came out on May 9th, uh, it it has this very dramatic um, front cover, which is the new economic order, and it's like this 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 world torn to pieces, and it states the liberal international order is slowly coming apart. Its collapse could be sudden and irreversible, and of course, what they mean by this is that U.S. like unipolar hegemony is finished. It's sayonara, and like that. I, I think again, for, for the we all kind of know this or should, but like for the Economist to admit, admit this is the case is really quite extraordinary. And it's like I've made the point before that um, in I believe it was January or February twenty twenty two. Xi and Putin signed this memorandum of friendship and understanding between Russia and China. Yeah. Uh, it effectively created a new world. Yeah. Uh, and it called for um, untrammeled um, cooperation between China and Russia in the arts, in science, in technology, in every conceivable field. Under its terms, uh, they are going to make films together and like uh, and and uh, 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 promote uh, cultural sharing. And like the Russians are now going to be taught Mandarin um, as a, as a, in school, and the the the, the China, uh, Chinese were going to be taught Russian in school, which is like a, a huge game changer and it means that Russia is now one of the fastest growing languages in the entire world um, but the, the, the but the, the the point is is that this was rather the significance of this was rather missed at the time and then you fast forward to a year later and the Pentagon publishes a report or I'm sorry RAN which is the Pentagon think tank publishes a report basically saying that uh, well the risk of, of allowing the proxy war in Ukraine to go on too long yeah. is that it would it will push China and Russia to, closer together and it's like I mean horse stable door bolted like it just it's it's it, 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 and, and i think that we've seen it we've seen a deepening of this so can please, i can i read a few thought. paragraphs from please, the economist please do please do. as we report the disintegration of the old order is visible everywhere sanctions wah, are used wah, wah. <laughs> sanctions are used four times as much as they were during the 1990s america has recently imposed quote secondary penalties on entities that support russia's army a subsidy war is underway as countries seek to copy China and America's vast state backing for green manufacturing. Although the dollar remains dominant and emerging economies are more resilient, global capital flows are starting to fragment, as our special report explains. Yeah. The institutions that safeguarded the old system are either already defunct or fast losing credibility. The World <laughs> Trade Organization turns 30 next year, but will have spent more than five years in stasis owing to America's neglect. The IMF is gripped by an identity crisis. <laughs> we self-identify as the WMF now. No, um, but, the, but yeah, the, I mean, it's really quite extraordinary. It basically just admits that like, the, 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 the US has gotten really fat and lazy and hubristic and yeah. it hasn't really noticed that the world has completely changed and that they are by no means can make can make virtually zero claim to being a, the most powerful country in the world um, anymore, and that's not going to change. No. In fact, it's good. it's kind of irreversible, and it's yeah that like I think that the the the, the sanctions point is really interesting because yeah that like it, it, it's kind kind of at least. In the kind of in the in the nineties and in the early two thousands, the I'm particularly under Obama, of course, the U.S. had this whole 
we're still claiming to be a moral actor and are trying to win hearts and minds yeah. by the, all this human rights rhetoric bullshit yeah. and, and whatnot. And it's like, it's gotten to the point now where it's like they're out of honey and they've, all they've got is like vinegar to offer. It's like, right, well, we're going to sanction you. We're going like, you know, to threaten you. Like, like there's, 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 zero, there's zero carrot. It's all stick now. And it's yeah. like, it's really, yeah. what's really interesting is, is that not, um, th there was, uh, obviously there was a, a coup in Niger um, and um, as we discussed last week, the, um, uh, the, 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 the government has asked uh, for all US troops to leave. They don't want them there. And it's created this rather remarkable situation where Russians are now occupying, including members of Wagner, are like occupying this US base. Um, and like uh, the point is, like, some Nigerian government officials recently spoke publicly about what, what turn them against the US was the US literally just ordered them to cut all ties yeah. with Iran and Russia and China yeah. and they were just like who, who do you think you are yeah. and so I think that that's increasingly the, well, there's the a attitude lot. I mean West <laughs> Africa is very much a microcosm for yeah. the shifting global order oh, yeah. um, but let's move on you were talking about uh, sanctions and so I want to yeah. I want to talk about I want, I want to play this clip uh, this is an old, a bit of an old clip at this point um, yeah. But um, I think it's very illustrative. Um, so Vladimir, P well, let's just play it. You know, to use the dollar as a tool of foreign policy struggle is one of the biggest strategic mistakes made by the U.S. political leadership. The dollar is the cornerstone of the United States power. I think everyone understands very well that no matter how many dollars are printed, they are quickly dispersed all over the world. Inflation in the United States is minimal. It's about 3 or 3.4 percent, which is, I think, totally acceptable for the U.S. But they won't stop printing. What does the debt of $33 trillion tell us about? It is about the emission. Nevertheless, it is the main weapon used by the United States to preserve its power across the world. As soon as the political leadership decided to use the US dollar as a tool of political struggle, a blow was dealt to this American power. I would not like to use any strong language, but it is a stupid thing to do and a grave mistake. Look at what is going on in the world. Even the United States allies are now downsizing their dollar reserves. Seeing this, everyone starts looking for ways to protect themselves. But the fact that the United States applies restrictive measures to certain countries, such as placing restrictions on transactions, freezing assets, etc., causes great concern and sends a signal to the whole world. What did we have here? Until 2022, about 80% of Russian foreign trade transactions were made in US dollars and euros. US dollars accounted for approximately 50% of our transactions with third countries, while currently it is down to 13%. It wasn't us who banned the use of the US dollar. We had no such intention. It was decision of the United States to restrict our transactions in US dollars. I think it is complete foolishness from the point of view of the interests of the United States itself and its taxpayers, as it damages the US economy, undermines the power of the United States across the world. By the way, our transactions in Yuan accounted for about 3%. Today, 34% of our transactions are made in rubles and about as much, a little over 34% in Yuan. Why did the United States do this? My only guess is self-conceit. They probably thought it would lead to full collapse, but nothing collapsed. Moreover, 
we are we are back, um, and we have uh, in in keeping in theme with this, uh, we have oh jeez, the article's not working. Um, I'm getting Cyrillic. <laughs> so we have just a few weeks ago in Beijing, Blinken confronts China over powering Russia's war. He sent a very stern warning to China to stop supplying the Russian military. What happened just a few weeks later? Well, China's Xi Jinping, this is CNN, rolls out the red carpet for close friend Putin in strong show of unity. And we have this video. This is an embrace, which is not common in China. They're no, not, not really hugging people. No. Um, between President Putin and President Xi. So this is a, a uh, direct rebuke to Blinken. Yeah, I indeed, think. indeed. And I think that, like, it, I mean, I think that Blinken's, like, language was, I mean, g given that this is the same dude who uh, f rather famously or infamously, like, winced when Biden called Xi a dictator, yeah. I think that he's <clears throat> kind of gloves off a bit now, probably, uh, um, probably a direct um, White House instruction and um, yeah the, 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 it was a, it was a, an incendiary and really quite bullying um, statement that he uh, that, that he made about about Xi's support for Russia um, and was effectively ordering um, the Chinese government to cease um, um, assist, uh, ass assisting Russia's war effort um, and yeah the, the response is Putin flies out to China and they have various bro moments um, and they were like they were also flanked by two bodyguards who had like nuclear briefcases yeah. in case anyone f fancied getting up to any tomfoolery <laughs> so it's just like yeah I think it's just it's very very clear like fuck you uh, yeah. really and I, I think also as well it, what's really interesting is is how um, it, in Xi visited Serbia um, then so just to, as a bit of background for those who don't know Serbia uh, has an enormous amount of Chinese investment um, it's it's increasingly part of the, the China's one belt one road infrastructure it's close to having the fastest trains in Europe um, as a result of this um, most of the Balkan wider Balkan region is absolutely crying out for um, like the, uh, new roads new trains yeah. new infrastructure for kinds and that that investment is, is not coming from the US and Europe uh, lots of countries in this region would love Chinese investment um, but they're basically blocked from receiving it from like by, <laughs> by the US um, I think there was a there was a, a, a case in in Albania where uh, the, the the Chinese started trying to invest in the country's railway network which is like a, about the worst in the world and, and uh, is uh, sl almost as slow as walking um, and they chase the Chinese out of town by sending tax inspectors to their offices every day to harass them, yeah. make them kind of create this this hostile environment to make them feel unwelcome and disrespected. And so they left. Um, so it, it, it so it, I mean, his visit to Ser his visit to Serbia, there were like communist flags all over <laughs> Belgrade, yeah. which was was actually I mean I love to see of course, but the um, uh, and uh, he gave a direct address. There were like 20, 20, between twenty and thirty thousand people attended this this public address he gave, which is very rare yeah. extremely rare and then of course the guardian decided to that this was the perfect time to report on the growing threat of chinese espionage in europe and yeah. illustrated it with a chinese flag on a building in serbia yeah um so but it's like yeah i think that the, it, 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 it it's in, it's very encouraging that the response is fuck you yeah. uh, basically yeah and and, <laughs> and 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 the result of this was a joint statement a sweeping joint statement released oh, yeah. by the two leaders which laid out their country's alignment on a host of issues, including energy, trade, security, and geopolitics, with specific references to Ukraine, Taiwan, and the conflict in the Middle East. Yeah. Um, I want to, to cap this off. Uh, I couldn't pull up the original article I had planned for this, but this will do. China is dumping U.S. Treasuries. Oh God! Yeah. I mean, I think I think I might add as well that like this this joint statement, it's like eight thousand words long uh, yeah. when translated into English. So it's maybe not the kind of thing that that, that that most people will read. I actually think it's really worth going over. I mean, there's an there's an excellent summary by a a top Twitter user called Arn, Arnard Bertrand, who's a, a French entrepreneur who lives in China and is yeah. very 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 pro very very pro China. Um, and he, he does good work. 
Yeah. He does good work. Oh, he does. He does. He does really good work cutting through bullshit and propaganda, um, and um, you know, defending China from vile attacks in the Western media and by Western politicians. And the point is, is that the statement it it, he he highlights all of the the uh, the the most important takeouts from the from the statement and the fact that they like explicitly refer to the US um, as like a source of injustice and unfairness in the world is like really unprecedented because like China has sticks very doggedly to its policy of non-interference in other other nations affairs but it has now started commenting on things like the genocide in Gaza right. and doing so in a right. very diplomatic and, 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 and intelligent way um, and very dignified as well um, the, um, did they have to deal <laughs> the, the, the poor Chinese have to deal with psychopaths in expensive suits in western politicians yeah. uh, which is not really their style but yeah it explicitly states that um, uh, it, it, the, the Russia and China demanded that um, they, they, like they called on relevant countries and organizations to stop taking co- uh, confrontational policies and interfering in the internal affairs of other current countries, undermining the existing security architecture as laid out by the United Nations. Um, and it's like, yeah, I mean, it's just really quite, quite, quite astonishing. And yeah, they said the U.S. is the key source of of conflict and conf- confrontation in the world. And they 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 said we'll just stop it. Yeah. Um, and I think that like, yeah, the, this of course received absolutely no media coverage but like th- this will have been read by members of the imperial brain trust oh, i think absolutely. that their response is probably like we're screwed yeah. uh, because like the so you, you sorry just really quickly yeah. because like this is the core of the chi- the the china russia one of the reasons that it is like so dangerous to like western imperialism is you have a country that has all the world's resources in the world, and then China, which is doing absolutely astonishing yeah. um, things with uh, automation. Um, uh, they, they're making like they, they have they have factories that can churn out like multiple uh, ele- like like thirty or forty electric cars an hour. Yeah, well, I mean, like it's every like, every leading, crazy. every every mm. like important field for the future, whether it's microchips or uh, green technology. Um, or uh, artificial intelligence, mm. they are either beating us or... Well, they are so or, far ahead, or, it's not even funny, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> or, or in some cases, you know, just like in, in close competition, yeah. maybe a few meters behind, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I, I do, I mean, so real quick, let's go to the China yeah. dumping U.S. treasuries because you had something very insightful that you told me last night regarding Eisenhower, right? Yeah, yeah, so I think that like... Basically, the the, the the Suez crisis it happened it occurred in 1956, and this was like the the the, the death of the British Empire. But in effect, what like um, Britain, because it was still believed it was a major world power capable of acting unilaterally, decided in conjunction with France and Israel after um, the anti-British president of Egypt, um, General Nasser. Uh, he nationalised the Suez Canal, yeah. which the British owned, and therefore British Britain controlled what came through and what didn't, and they profited from that. And uh, NASA nationalised it, and so they decided, well, we need to get rid of this insane, evil person who is undermining Western civilization. Yeah, this new Hitler um, uh, at NASA. They they staged a false flag incident where the the Israelis provoked the Egyptians and got fired upon. So then Britain and Britain and France went to the rescue of plucky yeah. little Israel. Israel, which was the exact, exact this is meant to be Israel's purpose um, from, from, from its foundation was to pr- provide Preside a justification them, yeah. for Western imperialism in, in West Asia and North Africa. Yeah. The point is, is that Eisenhower was absolutely furious about this um, and he was very, very keen on building positive relations with the third uh, with the global south um, as was his successor kennedy and um, we see what happens we see what happens to happen to that but like the point is is yeah that he that he told he told the the british to turn back and and, and stop what they were doing um, and they re- initially refused what actually um, did make them very embarrassingly retreat from this <laughs> proxy war that they they'd initiated. Was he threatened to die? The, after the, the Second World War, the U.S. effectively owned Britain. Yeah. Okay, and it had it had it owned about four billion dollars in then money, which is 
obviously a lot higher sure a lot higher um, in in they own four billion in British debt and they basically said well we'll dump it on the international markets and it will it will basically destroy the value of your currency both at home and internationally yeah and so I think that the the, the Chinese um, uh, dump, dumping this uh, it's it's maybe not as as damaging as it would have been to Britain at this time sure but it is it is a a, 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 a clear indication that the China does not see very much value in the US dollar anymore yeah. because um, yes the US is just printing so much of it that like their, that their own military contractors are backing away from contracts with the Pentagon because they're losing money on it so the, the response is just to print more money to compensate them for their losses right. and it's like yeah that in a in effect, uh, there's there's a very there's there is there there is a risk of the dollar being massively well not maybe not massively but over uh, um, um, in the long term being considerably devalued as a result and I think that China is probably going to keep dumping this. Um, yeah, this isn't the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're increasingly moving to they're trying to create alternative non-Western payment systems to make individuals and countries sanctions proof um, and get around. Like there's been an enormous growth since the start of this war in. Um, transactions using non-dollar currencies I mean, that's, that's, what, yeah. that's what the Putin clip was yeah 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 and it's like and it's it, it, this is not really but I mean again we go back to the Economist article this is for people for kind of critical observers this has been very clear and the significance of it has been very clear but it's just not featured in the Western media at all that this is a huge the start of a long-term trend away from u.s economic glo like yeah. hegemony globally yeah. and so um yeah the, i i strongly suspect other countries are going to start f following suit too and i mean what's the response to that you have to take our dollars like, yeah like, or we'll <laughs> so, sanction you <laughs> yeah 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 i mean we see with the failure of operation prosperity guardian that the u.s is in case i mean the u.s has almost had its own, own suez yeah crisis right um by right. the but th courtesy of god's partisans and sarala i think that <laughs> um but like yeah the, um so we may there's a there's a Chinese curse which is may you live in interesting times but um, I I I I, th I think yeah we are living in interesting times and I rather enjoy it yeah actually hey everyone um if you enjoyed this video or or any of our other content uh please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube it will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs thank you.